the Lord was reminded by you the truth that don't go sin. As you are about to eat the body of the master, or froze with fear, let you be burned for it is fire. And before you drink in communion of blood, be first reconciled with all those you have offended. Then you may take courage to eat the mystical food. Before you take part in the awesome sacrifice of the life-giving body of the master, take care and pray with fear of God like this. Master, Lord Jesus Christ, our God, the source of life and immortality, creator of everything visible and invisible, co-eternal and co-everlasting Son of the Father in the love beginning, because of the love and goodness you put on flesh and you crucified and buried for us on day one by grateful people in these latter days, and have by your own blood renewed our nature corrupted by sin. Accept the Lord, keep my repentance, that of a sinner, and turn towards me and hear my words. I have sinned, Lord, I have sinned before heaven and before you. And I, and I am not worthy to look upon the height of your glory. For I have provoked your goodness, I have transgressed your commandments, I have disobeyed your ordinances. But you, Lord, be long suffering and of great mercy, do not remember evil. And I have not given me over to destruction because of my lawlessness, that I have ever evaded my conversion. <clears throat> you who love all people said by your prophet, I do not desire the death of the sinner, but that he should turn and live. For Master, you do not wish that the work of your should perish, nor do you take pleasure in the destruction of human beings. The desire that everyone should be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. Therefore, even I, although I am unworthy both of heaven and earth and of this temporary life, having wholly yielded myself to sin, and I became the slave of pleasure and have defiled your image, yet being your creature and of your shaping, I do not despair for my salvation and my wretchedness, but I am emboldened by your infinite compassion and I draw near. Therefore, O Christ, you who love all people, receive even me as the harlot, as a thief, as the publican, and as the prodigal. Take away the heavy burden of my sins, you who take away the sin of the world, who heal the infirmities of all people, who call to yourself the weary and the burdened, and give them rest, who came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Do cleanse me from the fondment of the flesh and spirit, and teach me to fulfill holiness in your fear. Then the pure testimony of my conscience, receiving my portion of your holy gifts, I may be united to your holy body and precious blood, and have you dwell and remain within me with the Father and Holy Spirit. Yes, O Lord Jesus Christ, my God, grant that the communion of your holy and life-giving mysteries may not be to my condemnation. Do not let me be afflicted in soul and body by partaking of them unfriendly, but grant that to the last breath of my life, I shall partake of my share uncondemned of your holy gifts, looking to the fellowship of the Holy Spirit for eternal life, and to a favorable answer at, at your awesome judgment seat, that even I may also become a partaker with your life of your incorruptible blessings and your prepared for those who love you, and in whom, Lord, you are glorified to you just the ages on earth. I know, Lord, that I partake of worthily of your pure body and your precious blood, and that I am guilty by Christ and my God, as I eat and drink condemnation to myself and not discerning your body and blood. Yet, emboldened by your loving kindness, I come to you who said, He who eats my flesh and drinks, him, and drinks my blood abides in me and I in him. Chew, take pity, therefore, Lord, and do not rebuke me a sinner, but deal with me mercifully. Let these holy gifts give me healing and cleansing, enlightenment and protection. Salvation and sanctification of soul and body. May they avert every fantasy, evil practice, and operation of the devil and act in my members by design. May they give me confidence in and love for you, amendment of life and perseverance, increase of virtue and perfection, fulfillment of your commandments, communion of the Holy Spirit, provisions for the journey of eternal life, and an acceptable answer at the awesome judgment seat. Let them not be for judgment and condemnation. Amen. O Lord, my God, I know that I am not worthy or sufficient that you should come under the roof of my house, under, under the roof of the house of my soul, for it is entirely desolate and in ruins, and you do not have a worthy place in me to lay your head. <clears throat> but as you humble yourself from on high for our sake, do likewise also for my unworthiness. And as you will in the cave to buy any manger of dumb animals, take it upon yourself now to enter the manger of my dumb soul and to my soul and body. And as you did not refuse to enter and meet the sinners in the house of Simon the leper, so also will to deign to enter into the house of my soul, leper and sinner that I am. And as you did not cast out the harlot, a sinner like me, who came and touched you, to have compassion on me, the sinner who now comes to touch you. And as you did not abhor the kiss of her sinful and unclean mouth, do not abhor my mouth, more stained and unclean than hers, nor my sordid and unclean and shameless lips, nor my more unclean tongue. But let the fiery pool of your most pure body and precious blood bring sanctification 
illumination and strengthening of my lowly soul and body, relief of the burden of my many transgressions, protection against every operation of the devil, and averting and hindering of my mean and evil habits, modification of my passions, fulfillment of your commandments, and increase of your divine grace and inheritance of your kingdom. For it is not with a light heart of Christ my God that I venture to approach you, but I trust in your inevitable goodness. May I not be praised to Satan by abstaining from wrong from your communion. Therefore, O Lord, I pray to you who alone are holy, that you sanctify my soul and body, my heart and my mind, and renewing me holy, implanting my members fear of you. Do not let your sanctification be taken from me, but be my help and protector, governing my life in peace. Be my make me worthy to obtain a place at your right hand and your saints, to the prayers and supplications of your most dear mother, of your bodyless ministers and pure angelic powers, and of all your saints, who from the ages of God favor you. Amen. I am not worthy, sovereign Lord, for you to come under the roof of my soul. Yet because of your love for all people, you wish to dwell me, I, I boldly come. Command that the gates open which you will remain, and you will come in with love toward all people, as is your nature. You will come in and enlighten my darkened reasoning. I believe that your goodness for you did not send away the harlot who came to you to the tears, nor cast off the repentant publican, nor reject the thief who acknowledged your kingdom, nor forsake the repentant persecutor for what he was. But you counted as your friends all those who came to you in repentance. You alone are blessed as always now and forever, to the ages of ages. Amen. But Lord Jesus Christ, my God, absolve, remit, forgive, and pardon me, a sinful, unprofitable, and unworthy servant, the errors, transgressions, and trespasses which I have committed from my youth to the present day and hour, whether in knowledge or in ignorance, in words or deeds or thoughts or reasonings and pursuits, and in all my senses, and through the intercessions of the all pure and ever virgin Mary, your mother, who conceived you without sin, my only hope, protection, and salvation, help me worthy, uncondemned, to partake of your pure and immortal and life giving and awesome mysteries, for the remission of sins, for eternal life, for sanctification and enlightenment for strength, healing, health of both soul and body, and for the erasing and complete removal of my evil thoughts and my collections, superstitions, and nocturnal fantasies brought by dark and evil spirits. Rejoice is the kingdom of the power of the honor and worship together with the Father and the Holy Spirit, now and forever to the ages of ages. Amen. O Master, Lord Jesus Christ, our God, you alone have the authority to forgive human beings their sins, for you are good and love everyone. Forgive all my transgressions committed in knowledge or in ignorance. Make me worthy, uncondemned, to receive your divine and glorious, pure and light in your mysteries, and cure thereby neither punishment nor the increase of my sins, but receiving cleansing, sanctification, and a pledge of life to come and of the kingdom. Let them be, let them be for me a rampart, a help, and overturning of my adversaries, and a wiping out of my many transgressions. For you are God of mercy, compassion, and love of all human beings, and you will give glory with the Father and the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit, and the From foul lips and impure heart, from unclean tongue and defiled soul, receive my prayer, O my Christ. Take now into account my words, my ways, or my shamelessness. Grant me boldness, my Christ, to say all that I wish, but rather teach me all that I should do and say. I have sinned more than a harlot, who mourning where you live, Boldly came forward to anoint your feet, O my, o my Christ, my Master, and my God. And as you did not reject her to come with eagerness of heart, reject not me, O Lord, but extend to me your feet, that I may hold and kiss, and with a stream of tears, as with a precious moon, I may, hold, I may boldly anoint them, wash me in my, in my tears, and purify me in love, O Lord. Forgive my errors and grant me pardon. You know the multitude of my sins. You also know my wounds and you see my bruises, yet you know my faith, you see my eagerness, and you hear my sighs. From you, my God, and my Creator, and my Redeemer, is hidden not one tear, not even a part of one. Your eyes know my imperfections, in your book already written down are all the acts yet not done. Behold my loneliness, behold how great is my weariness, and all my sins, God of all, remit everything so that with a clean heart, a conscience filled with holy fear, and a contrite soul, I may partake of your most pure and holy spotless mysteries that give life and divinity to all who eat and drink of you with a pure heart. For you have said, Master, that whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me and I in him. Indeed, true is the word of my Master and my God. 
For he who shares in these divine and divine graces is in no way alone, but is with you in Christ, the triple radiant light, that delights you so well. But so that I may never be alone without the giver of life, my breath, my life, and my joy, and the world's salvation, I have, as you see, with tears in a contrite soul, drawn near to you to ransom my errors, beseeching you to rescue me, and I condemn to share in your life giving mysteries. So as you have said, you might dwell with me, the most wretched one, that I not be found by the deceiver without your face. And be seized by deception, and seducing me, lead me away from your life giving words. Therefore, I fall before you and fervently cry out to you. As you receive the prodigal and the harlot when she came to you, so receive me, the harlot and prodigal compassionate one, as I come to you now with a contrite heart. I know, Savior, that no one has offended you as I have, nor committed the deeds that I have done. But this again I know, that neither the greatest of my sins nor the multitude of my transgressions exceed my God's great forbearance and his great love for all. But with the oil of forgiveness, you cleanse and illumine those who fervently repent and make sure of your life and partakers of your divinity. And although this is strange to the minds of angels and of men, you speak with them often as your true friends. These thoughts make me bold. These thoughts give me thanks, my Christ. And seeing your rich kindness towards us, I rejoice in trouble too. I partake of fire, being grass, and behold, a strange wonder. I am unexpectedly refreshed, as was the burning bush, burning but not consumed. Therefore, thankful in mind, thankful in heart, thankful in every member of my body and soul, I worship and magnify and glorify you, my God, as being blessed from now into the ages. Amen. Jesus Christ, wisdom of God, peace and power, holy, pure, and spotless glory, moved by the ineffable pity in your love toward all people. You took upon yourself our full fame from the chaste and virgin blood of her who wondrously conceived you at the coming of the Holy Spirit and by the favor of the eternal Father. In this assumed nature, you underwent the life giving and saving passion, the cross, the nails, the spear, death itself. Mortify in me the passions of the body that destroy the soul. You who destroyed the power of Hades by your burial, bury and destroy the devices of the evil spirits through pure thoughts. You who raised the fallen forefather by resurrection, raise me up from the sin that I have fallen into and show me the way of repentance. By your glorious ascension, you deified the soon body and honored it at the right hand of the Father. Make me worthy by partaking of your holy mysteries of a place at your right hand with the same. You made your holy disciples precious vessels by the coming of the Comforter, the Spirit. Declare me also a vessel of your coming. You promised to come again to judge the world in righteousness. Grant that I should go to meet you, my Creator and Maker, in the clouds with all the saints, and that I may glorify you forever and praise you with your beginningless Father and your all holy, good, and life giving spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. I stand before the doors of your temple, but I have not refrained from wicked thoughts. But you, O Christ my God, justify the publican, and show mercy to the Canaanite woman, and open the gates of paradise to the thief. Open for me the depth of your love, and receive me as I draw near and touch you, as did the harlot and the woman with the issue of blood. The latter only touched the hem of your garment, and she immediately received healing, while the former, clinging to your pure feet, obtained forgiveness of her sins. But may I, the miserable one, be not consumed by daring to receive your whole body. Receive me as you did not, and enlighten the perception of my soul through the intercessions of her who gave birth to you without sin, and of the heavenly powers, for you are blessed unto the ages of ages. Amen. Yes. The word of the Lord, by the word of the Lord, that I have turned from the bread of the south of the power, or some of the bread of the ages of the ages. Amen. Lord, we're going to be from the facts. The Lord is born to deserve the strength of his establishment. The Lord shall not move. The 
first who suffered the agony so Christ the earth is filled with praise. Shelter us under the protection of the Lord, Lord, with peace and enemy and madness and your by peace. Lord, have mercy this night, your Lord, and sins, and your mercy, God, and mercy. Bless us, God, and bless us, Lord, 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 No, it's all.
be more zealous to confirm your call and election. For if you do this, you will never fall. So there will be richly provided for you an entrance into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Therefore, I intend always to remind you of these things, though you know them and are established in the truth that you have. I think it right, as long as I am in this body, to arouse you by way of reminder, since I know that the putting off of my body will be soon, as our Lord Jesus Christ showed me. And I will see to it that after my departure, you, will, you may be able at any time to recall these things. For we did not follow it, we did not follow cleverly the devised myths, but they made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. But we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. For when he received honor and glory from God the Father, and the voice was born to him by the majestic glory, this is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. We heard this voice born from heaven, for we were with him on the holy mountain. And we have the prophetic word made for sure. You will do well to pay attention to this, as to a lamp shining in a dark place, until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your heart. Let 
He has time. He has time. He, he looks at his, he looked at, at his mother at the way he came. My hour has not yet come. And yet he submits to the will of his mother. He understands that the time has come. He even tells the, 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 in one of his servants, he says, Look, when the wind blows, you're going to say it's hot. It is. When the, when the rain comes, you say it's good. This it is. You can all read the signs of the times. And you, know, you can all read the signs of the weather. How can you not read the signs of the times? Jesus, if he had anything beyond what we normally see, we don't give him credit for the signs. We don't give him credit for this. In fact, many people go out of the way to tell, to tell you know, the logic they say, oh, look, people are coming on the internet. How many more people could he have reached? Right? He comes with us an internet, and all of a sudden there's this mass production of everything that Jesus has done. We can catalog everything. As if we know that. As if we need no better to tell God in the proper time for him to come on us. Jesus had time in everything that he did. He knew the proper time to make sure that, you know, what, you know, what was going to happen. When, when, when should he leave for, from Bethany to go see his friend Lazarus? He knew. He knew exactly. He knew exactly when he needed to show up in Jerusalem. When the crowd was going to be just at its feet, he knew exactly when Zacchaeus was going to be walking by to make sure that he was going to be there. So Zacchaeus could run up the thing to uh, up the sycamore tree and see him. He knew exactly all of these things. He had the perfect timing in everything. And so when Jesus opens his mouth to say words like, don't say it.
God, the Son of God, begotten of the Father before all ages, light of light, true God of true God, begotten, God created, of one essence with the Father, to whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from the heavens and was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and became man. He was crucified for us under Pontius Pilate and suffered and was buried. And he rose on the third day according to the scriptures. He ascended into the heavens and is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge the living and the dead. His kingdom shall have no end. And in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the creator of life, who proceeds from the Father, who together with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who spoke through the prophets, in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the remission of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the age to come.
and make me worthy without condemnation to partake of your pure mysteries for the remission of sins and for eternal life. Amen. Behold, I approach for divine communion. O make your burning gods as I partake, for you are a fire consuming the unworthy, but cleanse me from every sin. O Son of God, receive me today as a partaker of your mystical supper, for I will not speak of the mystery to your enemies, nor will I give you a kiss as did Judas, but like a thief I confess to you, remember me, Lord, in your kingdom. Tremble, O man, as you behold the divine blood. It is a burning coal that sears the unworthy. The body of God who deifies and nourishes me. It deifies the spirit that watches and nourishes the mind. You have smitten me with yearning, O Christ, and by your divine medals you have changed me. But burn up with spiritual fire my sins, and grant me to be filled with the light in it, so that leaping for joy I may magnify with my virtue tongues. How shall I, when I worthy, enter into the splendor of your saints, if I should dare to enter into the bridal chamber, my master will condemn me, since it is not a wedding garment, and being bound up, I shall be cast out by the angels. Cleanse, O Lord, the filth of my soul, and save me, as you are the one who loves mankind. Master who loves mankind, Lord Jesus Christ, my God, let not these holy gifts be to my judgment, because I am unworthy, but rather for the purification and sanctification of both soul and body, and the pledge of the life and kingdom to come. It is good for me to cleave unto God, and to place in Him the hope of my salvation. O Son of God, receive me today as a partaker of your mystical supper, for I will not speak of the mystery to your enemies, nor will I give you a kiss as did Judas, but like the thief I confess to you. Remember me, Lord.
We will have the blessing of the grapes afterwards. Um, the uh, the Amido is there for you to take. You can might will be distributing communion. When you come for communion, please remove your masks so that uh, communion can be distributed appropriately. Thank you. Mm -hmm.
prayers and supplications of the glorious name of their Lord, and the ever Virgin Mary, and of all your saints. For you are our sanctification, and to you we give glory, to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and unto the ages of ages. Let us depart in peace. Let us pray. Oh, uh-huh. 
our graves this evening, and we have graves on every color. <laughs> so we have red, green, and black uh, graves for us this evening. Uh, you, you, will, you can come forward to uh, to uh, uh, venerate the icon. If you would like to bow in front of me either way, I'll move this to the center. You are welcome to do so. Uh, you, you may. Uh, and you may take a, a, you know, a napkin and uh, give yourself some grapes during this period of time. Can we your tea, a blessed feast. We will have paraclesis again on Friday. Uh, on Friday, at the same time, at uh, uh, CBC, we'll, we'll have uh, we'll, at, uh, at 6.30 in the evening on Friday, we'll have paraclesis again. And then we'll continue next week. We'll, Monday and Wednesday will be Baraklasis, and then on Friday, uh, as many of our great, great vespers uh, for Kingsies uh, uh, next week. But uh, we'll, we'll have Baraklasis services until then. <coughs> Thank you. 